Hi guys, Jordan here from MotionArray.com and thanks for joining us in this video all about motion design and specifically animation. We're gonna be diving into After Effects and looking at how to take existing shape layers and give them life through motion. It's Animation 101, so let's dive in. So in different videos, I've actually already created the storyboard to the intro sequence that you just saw. And I've also already gone through After Effects to create the base shape layers needed for each of the individual elements that you've seen in that intro. But besides the basic timing, we really don't have anything moving, and this is where animation comes in. Now, even though we're recreating that intro sequence you saw at the beginning, we're not actually gonna be creating it with all the stylized versions and all the bells and whistles. It's gonna be a lot more basic. This is so that you can feel comfortable following along step by step, even if you're relatively new to After Effects. This is also so we can focus in on some of the more core elements of animation, and the best place to start is going back to our storyboards. We have here a circle in the center of frame, check, bounces up, and starts to morph into a triangle. Okay, so let's start with a simple little bounce, and one of the things that we're gonna need to create that are called keyframes. A keyframe is just basically a marker that tells your program to have a specific value for a particular parameter at a particular moment in time. So for us, we can create a keyframe for the position of this circle by toggling this drop down here, or by hitting the P key on our keyboard. Over here is this little stopwatch symbol, and that's how you start creating your keyframes. Before we click on it to create a keyframe, we have to know where our playhead is in our timeline because wherever it is, that's where our keyframe is gonna show up. So let's move it to the point where we want our circle to start moving. Not at the very first frame, but let a little bit of time pass. Just some breathing room. So right here feels about good. So let's click to add a keyframe, but you should notice that nothing changes. This is because we only have one keyframe. Basically, we're telling our shape to be here at this point in time, but there's no other information that's telling it anything different, so there's no movement. We need to add another keyframe, either before or after it, in order to change that information. So let's add one by moving our playhead forward a little bit, and then all we need to do is change the position of our circle. Doing that will automatically create an additional keyframe. In fact, whenever you make a change to the position of the shape, it's gonna add an additional keyframe, or if your playhead hasn't moved from where you set the original one, it's gonna overwrite that keyframe. We just moved it up a little bit here. You can move the position by either clicking and dragging on the object itself, or by using the position parameters here. The first set of numbers here is the horizontal positioning value. Changing these numbers will change the position in either the left or the right direction. And the second number here is for the vertical position. So we can click and drag on the second value here to move the position of the circle up. So now that we've moved it up, let's move our playhead back to the start and press spacebar to see what we've actually created. Really basic movement. Whenever you have two or more keyframes present, the movement happens in between those keyframes. And when that second keyframe has passed, no more motion happens because there's no more information telling After Effects to change the position. It remains where that last one ended off. But now we don't want our circle to stay in the air, we want it to come back down for a second bounce. So we can either lower it back down again manually, or what we can do is click on the first keyframe and copy it with Control or Command C. Then let's make sure our playhead is in the correct position, and then we can paste that same keyframe in this location with Control or Command V. The benefit of doing it this way is that you get exactly the same position that you started at. Pixel perfect. Which would be really hard to do just by trying to line it up manually. Now we can play back our animation again and see what we have. A little trick here is that if you drag these ends in, or with your playhead in a specific position, hitting the B or the N keys, you can set the in and the out points to loop your playback in just this region. So clicking spacebar allows us to see only what's happening in this region here. This is what we have. It's a start, but you'll notice that it's really jagged and rough and starts and stops the entire movement in a linear and robotic way. We wanna make it feel more organic. And we can ease it out and make it feel more fluid through what's called, well, easing. This is a way to tell After Effects to take the change between one keyframe value to another and make sure that it changes in a non-linear way. Let me show you what that means. Let's take the middle section here. If we're gonna throw a ball up in the air, it wouldn't immediately shift directions at the top. It would slow down until it reached its peak and then slowly start to accelerate downward again. And we can actually do that with one simple function. Right click on the middle keyframe and select Keyframe Assistant Easy Ease. Or you could also just click F9 on your keyboard. 
You'll notice that when you do this, it changes the speed and motion. I'll show you in a side-by-side -side comparison so you can really see the difference clearer. Adding that easy ease caused the transition from getting to that middle keyframe and moving back down to happen in a much more gradual way. Easy ease keyframe assistants are a really simple way to add a more organic natural feel to your keyframe changes because it eases things both before and after your keyframe. But there are two other specific types of easing that I think would be really helpful for you. They're the easy ease in and easy ease out keyframes. Ease out just basically gives the starting keyframe a smoother initiation, while easy ease in can help to end keyframes to settle into a natural conclusion. These tools are incredibly useful and can immediately help to make your animation feel less linear and robotic and more smooth, organic, and natural. But now here's the thing, we've only been adding keyframing to the position parameter of our circle, but you can add keyframes to almost anything. Size, opacity, which is transparency, rotation, effects, and even things like color changes. Almost anything that you can edit and give a value to, you can add a keyframe to to help change those parameters over time. So let's add some keyframes to another part of our shape layer that can help to give it some more energy and life. Let's go back to the very beginning here, and we can see that we left a little bit of a dead space before the animation starts. This is intentional, because we wanted to add a little bit of a subtle build before the ball actually pops up. Basically, we wanted to make the ball compress like a spring and then expand again before it pops up into the air. In traditional animation, this actually has a term, stretch and squash. And because I'm terrible at drawing with a pencil, I'm really grateful that this is actually really easy to do inside of After Effects. And we're gonna be doing this by using keyframing again, but not on the position parameters, but on the scale parameter. We can toggle down the scale of our circle here by clicking this drop down, but we can also just highlight the layer itself and click the S key. And now that's the only thing visible, making it a little bit easier to work with. Now, if we change the scale of our object, we can change it in a uniform way. So clicking and dragging on the scale will either make our circle larger or smaller. But if we uncheck this link here, we can see that we can independently change the width and the height of the scaling. You can probably see where I'm going with this. So keeping these horizontal and vertical parameters unlinked, let's add a keyframe at the beginning before anything happens. Now let's move forward a couple frames and add another keyframe. We should now have two keyframes here that are exactly the same and don't make any difference. But now let's go between them and add an additional keyframe, but only change the vertical scaling and decrease it so that we squash the circle down here and make it look like it's compressed. Awesome. So now we've got a subtle animation of some compression in our circle. Right now our circle doesn't look like it's realistically staying in one place. It looks like it's sort of hovering in the air. I'm just gonna add a quick little line here with the rectangle tool, just to show you what I mean. Right now it doesn't look like our circle is compressing onto the ground. It looks like it's compressing in midair. This is because we don't have our anchor point in the correct position. A good way to think about it is that that's what After Effects considers to be the true center of your object. And changing where the center of your object is changes the way other parameters influence it. Ours is directly in the middle. But if we move it to the bottom of our shape, it'll start to look like gravity is pulling down, as if it's like a spring squashing down, getting ready to pop back up. So we can use the anchor tool here by clicking on it, and then click and drag on the anchor point here down to the correct location, holding control or command as we do that so that it snaps to the edge of our shape. Now our motion looks like this, way better. And you can start to feel how this really captures what the object would look like in real life. Awesome, so now let's add a few more keyframes to create an additional bounce. And we can copy and paste these position keyframes again to get exactly the same bounce as before, but just increase that middle keyframe so that the ball goes higher. And to add a little bit more realism, we can decrease the horizontal scaling during the vertical ascension of the circle to give some additional life and character to our ball so that it feels like it's accelerating upwards and then bringing those scales back to normal at the top of the arc. Now, if we play back, you can see that we're actually getting somewhere with our animations. By all means, it's not perfect, but you can absolutely see the progression. And you can see how much of a difference adding those easy ease ins and outs makes to giving an organic feel to your motion. But you might wanna have even more control over how those keyframes interact, more than just a binary yes or no to whether or not there's easing. And this is where the graph editor comes into play. Highlight the keyframes or the parameters that you're interested in, and then you can click on this button to change the layout of your timeline to go from portraying simple keyframes to showing you a graph editor for the actual motion of your object. There's a lot of different ways that you can use this feature, but I feel like the best way to start with and the most intuitive way to start with is through what's called the speed graph editor. A lot of animators will like either the value graph or the speed graph. 
And please play around with them and find what one is most intuitive to you personally. But if you're just new to After Effects and you don't know where to start, in my personal opinion, I feel like it's easier to understand the changes to speed rather than the changes to position. But that's just my personal preference. So you can select the kind of graph you want to use by going down here to this icon and selecting it. And for me, I'm going to choose Edit Speed Graph. Here, now our keyframes are displayed as a representation of how fast the object is moving. Left to right is still the progression of time, but lower means slower, if not stopped completely, and higher means faster. Now let's say that you want our circle here to come to a stop even more gradually than it does just by using the easing features. To do that, you can pull this tab out here, which will control how quickly or how slowly it comes to a stop with an incredibly high degree of specificity. I've put it on loop here with the animation on top and the speed graph value on the bottom so that you can get an even more clear sense as to how the speed graph represents the finished motion in the shot. Now, we've covered a lot, not just in this video, but in all the videos we've created on this topic of motion graphics. But I wanted to tie everything together with one last thing and giving you a way to implement all of this information into a new feature, a transition. So we're gonna be working now with rotation. Now, if you were to rotate the circle we have here, you wouldn't really see much, would you? You can't really tell if it's rotating around, so we're actually just gonna be rotating the triangle that comes next in the sequence as a way to morph and transition from one shape to the next. So let's try to bring up the rotation parameter of the triangle by selecting it and then hitting the R key. And here we get our rotation parameters. Now it's starting in a nice position and this is actually also the position we want it to end in as well. So let's make our first keyframe and then move forward a bit and then click and drag out the rotation to rotate it more. But we should notice that as we pass one full rotation, we see the number here with an X present. This number denotes the number of full rotations, so you can keep track of the motion if, for example, you wanted it to start and end in the same rotation amount, but make a few rotations in between that. So what I can do is actually just leave this number at zero and then key in the number of rotations that I want it to have. So what we have here is that our triangle starts and stops in the same rotational alignment, but it rotates between these keyframes. Awesome. So how does this help us to implement a transition? Well, let's take what we learned with keyframing and easing and start to make this animation feel a little bit more smooth and organic. Let's add an ease out at the start, and an ease in at the end. Then go back to our graph view here and pull out these handles to make it a little bit more extreme. I like that a lot more. And from here, all that's left to do is to match up the motion between our triangle and the circle that we've already created. And what's nice is that we can actually just copy and paste those keyframes to save a lot of time. This also has the added benefit of making the motion line up exactly without having to manually move things around and try and line them up perfectly. A helpful tip is that if you hit the U key, when a layer is highlighted, it'll pop up all of the elements that have keyframes associated with it. So then we can just take these last few here and highlight them by clicking and dragging our mouse over top of them so that they turn blue and copy them with Control or Command C. Then on that first blue keyframe, put the playhead over top of it, highlight your triangle layer, and then paste them with Control or Command V. And then if you click U to pop them up, you should see that they're matching identically and if you were to extend this line back, the triangle will be matching the motion of the circle. And now from here, we can start to animate the triangle back to the position that we want it to end at. Add some easing and use our graph editor to make sure that it starts slow at the top of the arc and then hits the ground going faster. And now we can play it back and see what we've got. It looks okay. We can kind of see a transition forming, but our timing is slightly off. A great tip for making your transitions look better is to hide them where the motion is the most extreme. And from what we learned before, we know that's in between keyframes. So let's find where our animation is traveling at its fastest, right about here, and then move our triangle layer back so that it starts at this point, and then move our circle layer forward so that it ends at the same point. And we can pull our rotation back a little bit to start at this point as well. This won't ruin the easing. It'll just make everything happen a little bit slower. Now, if we play back, you can see how much more that fast motion hides the cut and it already looks way better. From here, we could even add some effects to help morph and smooth the change between the circle and the triangle, but that's going a little bit beyond the scope of this particular video. The biggest thing to take away is that you have everything that you need now to continue on animating this project up until the end of the square. You've learned what a keyframe is, you've learned how to add them and use them, you've learned how to manipulate them both with easing and with the graph editor, and you've put it all together to create your own fully animated shape sequence. Congratulations. This is just the beginning of your animation journey, but let me tell you that it gets even more fun the further you go along. I'm so glad that you could join me on this brief introduction to animation in After Effects, but guys, that's it for me. Thanks so much for taking the time, and I can't wait to see you in another video.